Welcome into episode 11 of Winnipeg Jets Weekly. I'm your host, Connor Rabchak. The Winnipeg Jets just wrapped up a three-game road trip, which was also the dads slash mentors trip, and the Jets swept it. They beat the San Jose Sharks, the Anaheim Ducks, and the Arizona Coyotes. They kept a lot of streaks alive. They're setting a lot of records right now. Let's dive into those games, starting with the San Jose one. Before we get into the San Jose game, if this is your first time checking out Winnipeg Jets Weekly, this is a show I bring to you every Monday morning, recapping the week that was, previewing the upcoming week for the Winnipeg Jets, and handing out some awards, which we'll get to later on in the episode, like the hardest working Jet and the three stars of the week. Let's get into the Jets 2-1 win over the San Jose Sharks. The first 10 minutes of this game felt like a replay. The Winnipeg Jets were all over the San Jose Sharks peppering Mackenzie Blackwood with shots and he was up to the task he denied all of them the Jets were in a close game till late in the third period when Gabriel Velarde and the power play got on the board what a time it was for the power play to get going the top unit Nikolai Ehlers with a beautiful pass to Gabriel Velarde who was sitting on the back door and that was the difference the Jets came away with a 2-1 win Morgan Barron scored the other goal kind of a weird one just kind of hit him in front of the net and went in But it's a goal for Morgan Barron nonetheless, and the Jets came away with the two points to kick off the road trip. The Jets continued their streak of allowing three goals or less in this game. They only allowed the one. Connor Hellbuck with another quality start. He's been the best goaltender in the NHL, arguably the whole season, but especially since the start of December, his numbers have been incredible, and this game was no different, making 27 of 28 saves. But the biggest story to come out of this game for me was the special teams. Like I said, the Jets get that big goal late from Gabriel Velarde on the power play, and their penalty kill was up to the task too killing off both of the Sharks' power plays. The Jets' special team is really starting to turn a corner. Rick Bonus said after a few of these games that they're finally starting to win games with their special teams rather than lose them. And the Jets kept that theme going on the second night of the back-to-back against the Anaheim Ducks, where Lauren Brassois got the start. Not only did Laurent Brassois get the start after Hellbuck started the first night of the back-to-back, but Brassois was arguably the best Jet in this game, making 36 of 37 saves. The Jets once again extended their streak of allowing three goals or less, and Brassois obviously played a huge factor in that. The penalty kill once again. Ducks went 0-2 for 2 on their opportunities, and there was a big moment late where the Ducks were on a power play, and they had their net empty, a six on four situation. Not only were the Jets laying out blocking shots, but Brassois came up with a few huge saves in high danger spots. He's been exactly what the Jets have needed over the last two months. Not only is he giving Hella Buck a breather, who's having a great season in his own right, but Brassois has had a multitude of quality starts. And the Jets have the number one team save percentage in the NHL. Obviously, Hellebuck is a huge part of that, and his over 920 save percentage is going to dominate that stat. But Brassois has to be good for that too. Boston is the second best team. They have two true number one goalies in Jeremy Swayman and Linus Allmark. And the Jets, right up there, the best team in the league in save percentage. That speaks to defensive structure, Connor Hellebuck's season, and obviously Laurent Brassois, who had a great game against the Anaheim Ducks. In the third period of the San Jose game, the Jets' top line of Nikolai Ehlers, Mark Scheifele, and Gabriel Velarde, they were put back together. Coming out of the holiday break, they kind of slowed down. Rick Bonus went back to them, and they rewarded them. In the second period, Nikolai Ehlers got the Jets on the board with a really nice shot and a great screen from Gabriel Velarde, and that line kept the good times rolling on Sunday against Arizona. We'll get into that game in a second. But Rick Bonus going right back to that combination that worked so well before the holiday break, and they rewarded him immediately with a big goal and a big spot. Obviously, Gabriel Velarde got the game winner against San Jose. Then he has a huge play in the Nikolai Ehlers goal that got the Jets on the board in this one. But the Jets kept rolling and their power play converted yet again. Cole Perfetti on a nice seam pass, one time to the puck into the net past John Gibson. It was an insurance marker late, gave the Jets their third goal. And like I said earlier, they shut the game down. Brassois, the penalty kill, ended it late. The Jets pick up the two points on the second night of a back-to-back, setting up a game against two playoff opponents the Jets and the Arizona Coyotes who coming into the game were the second wildcard team in the Western Conference that game went Sunday night and the Jets kept the good times rolling with a huge win the Jets wrapped up their three game road trip with what was easily the most impressive win of that three game stretch a 6-2 win over the Arizona Coyotes As you see, if you're on YouTube, the shots weren't even close. 36 for Winnipeg, 17 for Arizona. Connor Hellebuck got the start in this one, but he wasn't asked to do too much. And the Jets, again, the power play. Maybe the success was short-lived because they went 0-4 for in this one, but their penalty kill was equal to the task. 
denying the Coyotes on both of their opportunities. Mark Scheifele scored his 13th and 14th goals of the season. The 13th one was a nice pass from Nikolai Ehlers as he was spinning in the defensive zone, sprung Shifley for a breakaway and he made no mistake, and then the second one was an empty netter, but Nikolai Ehlers, once again, he's now scored in back-to-back -back games. He had a nice slap shot over the blocker side of Karol Vejmelka, as well as Ehlers with the back-to-back -back goals. Cole Perfetti scored again in this game. This one didn't come on the power play. It was a 5-on-5 marker. He was kind of jamming away at the side of the net, and the goal actually went to Nino Niederreiter originally, but then the NHL changed the goal back to Cole Perfetti. That's his 12th of the season. He's having a great year. He's now scored in back-to-back -back games. And this one came at five on five. He's not just scoring on the power play. He's doing it in all situations. And on Vladislav Nemesikov's goal, Perfetti doesn't get credited with an assist, but he's the one for checking below the goal line. He won the puck back. And then an Arizona Coyotes player actually whacked the puck into the slot for Nemesikov who opened the scoring for the Jets, but it was all Perfetti down low, forechecking, winning a board battle, which ended up in the goal. Kind of an unofficial assist, if you will, but Cole Perfetti had a great game, one of his best of the season, and he's now scored in back-to-back -back games to wrap up the road trip. And after the win against the Anaheim Ducks, the Winnipeg Jets were the number one team in the NHL, but after this win against the Coyotes, all they did was extend that lead over teams like the New York Rangers, the Boston Bruins, who they beat going into the holiday break, and other Western Conference teams like the Vancouver Canucks, the Colorado Avalanche, who they're battling with for that number one seed in the Central Division. The Jets, with the streak they're on, aren't only pulling away from teams in the Central Division and the Western Conference, but now they're extending their lead atop the entire NHL standings. It's really impressive to watch. The Jets, in their last 12 games, are 10-0-2. That's a franchise record-setting point streak. We also know about the three goals or less streak that one is now at 29 games just an incredibly impressive stretch of hockey from winnipeg they've also gone 17 straight games without allowing more than two goals in regulation the only time they let up more than two in those entire 17 games was an overtime loss to the montreal canadians that third goal obviously came in overtime so it wasn't a regulation goal all 17, two or less in regulation, and then the one loss in overtime. This team is setting franchise records in point streaks. They're approaching the NHL record for the three goals or less streak, and they're setting their own streaks with the two goals or less in regulation. This is a defensive performance we haven't seen from a Winnipeg Jets team ever since they came back. It's incredibly impressive. The goaltenders have a huge part in it. The defense has a huge part in it. And the forward core, they acquire Gabriel Velarde, Alex Iafalo in the offseason. These are two guys that are defensively responsible. Mark Scheifele, Huss and Remus have talked about it a lot on the show. He's showing more defensively. It's a complete buy-in from this group and Rick Bonus. And this number one spot in the NHL is because of the buy-in, because of their defensive ability as a group. And they're pulling away from the Western Conference and the Central Division right now. And it's fun to watch if you're a Winnipeg Jets fan. And like I said to kick off the show, this was the Jets dad slash mentors trip and the Jets Twitter posted this photo after the win against Arizona. A really nice gesture from the team doing the dad's trip and obviously winning, sweeping the road trip, going 3-0. The vibes are sky high and it looked like the dads had a great time. The cameras kept cutting to them after every Jets goal, after every big moment. They looked like they were having a blast up there in the suites and you hear the quotes coming from the players. Obviously, they loved having their mentors involved in their everyday lives getting a peek behind the scenes, and the Jets go 3-0 on a California road trip. The players loved it, the mentors loved it, and everyone's coming home happy because the Jets are absolutely rolling right now. Now, it is time to hand out some awards, but before we do that, if you haven't already, make sure you're dropping a thumbs up on the video, hitting the subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss videos like this from Winnipeg Sports Talk in the future. We've got the hardest working Jet and the three stars of the week coming up, and I gotta admit, it was tough to pick. Let me know in the comments if I made the right choices. There's a lot of players you could say for the three stars. Obviously, the whole team is bought in. I just talked to how bought in they are defensively. A lot of players you could argue for the hardest working Jet. So let me know in the comments who your choices are, and let's get into the hardest working Jet of the week. My hardest working Jet of the week is Morgan Barron. He scored a goal in the San Jose game, and that entire fourth line you could give the hardest working Jet of the week to. Last week, it was Dominic Toninato who came home with that award. This week, it's his line mate Morgan Barron. They're blocking shots, he's a big part of the penalty kill, and he's working down low for checking, giving those top lines a breather, but he's not only doing that, the fourth line is generating offense, they're playing physical, and like I said, the blocked shots, 
that's what Rick Bonus loves the most from this group. Morgan Barron has been the driver of that line over the last couple games. He got rewarded with the goal that was kind of a lucky bounce, but he'll take it. He's up to 12 points on the year in 39 games, and he looks improved off of last year. He's got eight goals. That's a new career high. Morgan Barron, my hardest working Jet of the week on Winnipeg Jets Weekly. Now, before we get into the three stars of the week, honorable mention goes to Chuck Hellebuck, Connor Hellebuck's father, who was keeping Jets fans in the loop all week on Twitter, posting when the team was on their bus, at their hotel, going on a golf trip, keeping fans informed on what the dads and mentors were doing all week. And then he got this nice moment after the win against Arizona in the locker room with his son. And obviously he was in that photo that I showed earlier on in the episode. But Chuck Hellebuck, an unsung hero of the week, keeping Jets fans informed on what the dads and mentors were up to on the California road trip. Kicking off the three stars of the week, my third star is Mark Scheifele. He's coming off of a monster game against the Arizona Coyotes. He had the two goals. And ever since Ehlers, Scheifele, and Velarde have gotten put back together on that top line, they've looked just as dangerous as they did before the holiday break. They're back to putting up point totals. And Scheifele, over a point a game, plus minus plus 17, that number's way up from his career averages. But 40 points in 39 games, that's 14 goals and 26 assists. Mark Scheifele's been a force as a top line center. He's more motivated defensively this year, and he's been great. He's my third star of the week on Winnipeg Jets Weekly. My second star of the week is a guy who has scored in back to back games, and that is Cole Perfetti. But not only for the goals, Vladislav Nemesikov's goal, like I said earlier on in the episode, he didn't get credit with an assist, but that puck popped out into the slot because of him. Cole Perfetti had a great week. He's filling up the stat sheet a little bit more this year. He's now got 26 points in 39 games. He's well on pace to break his career highs in points and assists that he set last season. And he's been great. He's up to 12 goals on the year, which is already a career high. His previous was eight. Cole Perfetti, my second star of the week on episode 11 of Winnipeg Jets Weekly. My first star of the week is Nikolai Ehlers. He's also got goals in back-to-back -back games, and he had a gorgeous assist in the Arizona game. He made a defensive play, spun around, fired the puck to Mark Scheifele, who went in on the breakaway and scored his first goal of the game. But Ehlers, looking dynamic as ever, like I said, he's got goals in back-to-back -back games. He had a huge assist on the Gabriel Velarde game winner in San Jose, and he's a big reason why that power play unit has looked better as of late. Maybe the results haven't followed but he is generating a lot from that right flank. Nikolai Ehlers back in the top line. Him, Shifley, Velarde, they're back to cooking offensively. Ehlers is my number one star of the week on episode 11 of Winnipeg Jets Weekly. That's going to do it for the hardest working Jet and three stars of the week portion of the episode. Next is previewing the upcoming schedule for the Winnipeg Jets. But like I said before, make sure you're dropping a comment if you disagree with my choices. Who would you choose? And make sure you're dropping a thumbs up on the video. Let's get into the Jets' upcoming five games. The Winnipeg Jets return home for a four-game homestand starting on Tuesday night, January 9th against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Patrick Laine, former Winnipeg Jet, will not be playing in this one. And that theme of a star player not playing continues on Thursday night, January 11th. Connor Bedard recently fractured his jaw. He won't be playing in that game inside Canada Life Center. And then Saturday night, the Philadelphia Flyers, who have been a big surprise this year, they're actually in a playoff spot. Head coach John Tortorella has them playing like an inspired group. They come in Saturday night inside Canada Life Center. That should be a great game between two playoff teams, one in the West, one in the East. Grit on grit. That should be a fun game. And then to wrap up the homestand, Tuesday, January 16th against the New York Islanders. Another Eastern Conference team that's in a playoff spot. Ilya Sorokin, one of the elite goaltenders in the NHL, going up against Connor Halbuck, maybe the elite goaltender in the NHL. That'll be a nice way to wrap up the homestand. And then the Jets have four days without a game before they play the Ottawa Senators, which kicks off a three-game road trip against the Senators, Bruins, and Leafs. But I will be back next week to preview those games. But the Jets with a four-game homestand coming up against three Eastern Conference teams and the Connor Bedard-less Chicago Blackhawks. That's going to do it for episode 11 of Winnipeg Jets Weekly. Thank you so much for checking out the video. And like I said before, make sure you're dropping a thumbs up, hitting the subscribe button, hitting the notification bell. I'll be back next week to break down the Jets' first three games of their four-game homestand and preview their upcoming schedule as they will hit the road again. Make sure you're right back here Monday morning next week for episode 12 of Winnipeg Jets Weekly. Have a great week, everyone, and I'll see you next week.